In this video, we're going to talk about some common calculations using dates in Excel. The first calculation we're going to do is just calculate the difference between two dates. Now, if you watched our earlier videos uh, in, on dates in Excel, you'll remember that dates in Excel are stored as integers. So this 5-16-2001 is just stored as an integer value, and 9-5-1985 is also an integer value. So to calculate the difference between two dates, we can perform a simple subtraction of the two dates. And I'll get 5,732, which is the number of days between uh, May 16th, 2001, and September 5th, 1985. The second calculation we're going to do is calculating the age in years. There's two ways to do this. We're going to do one here, and we're going to do a different way down below. If I just want a, a decimal representation of age, then I could just divide by the number of days uh, in a year and find the difference between today and this date. So if I want to find the number of days uh, Days first, I can just take today, you'll remember from one of the earlier videos, it just gives me the date of today, and subtract the birth date, and that'll give me the number of days uh, from today since 1985. Now, if I want the number of years, I can just divide by 365, since there's 365 days in a year, but in reality, there's really 365 and a quarter days in a year for leap years. So if I divide that, I just get 34.2. So it's 34 years and 0.2 of a year since 1985 from today. Next thing I'm going to do is calculate six months, or I'm going to add six months to a date. There's two ways to do this. Since 2007 and later, there's a function called edate, which we'll do in seconds. The first way I'm going to do is using the date function. So again, if you recall from an earlier video, you can use the date function to create a date. The date function takes three parameters, year, month, and day. So if I want to add six months, I'm going to, when I do this month calculation, I'm going to add six to it. So I'm going to create my date. First, I'm going to take the year and just type the year function, which we also discussed in an earlier video, and select my date. So this is going to be my year parameter. Now I'm going to take my month parameter. Again, click on my cell. And lastly, I'm going to take my day parameter, and I'll amend it in a second. So I just created a date, and you'll notice that this is exactly the same date because I didn't do anything different. It just took the year, month, and date from this 7115. But if I want to add six months to it, I can just go into the month parameter, and at the end, just plus six. And it added six months to the date. What you'll notice is that six months actually changed the year. And even though I set the year to be the year of this value here, which is 2015, Excel knew that when I added six months to it, the year changed over from 2015 to 2016. The second way you can do it is using this edate function. So again, edate is a newer function since 2007, and it just takes two parameters, start dates and months. So I click my start date. And the second parameter is just the number of months that I want to add to my date. So I get 1, 1, 16. Same two answers. The next function we're going to do is adding three years to a date. So similarly to above, there's two ways in which we can do it. The first way is using the date function. So again, take the year parameter and month parameter and my day parameter. And again, it's the same value. But now if I want to add three years, just go into my year parameter and add three. You'll see three years from this is 7-1-2018. Before I move on, you might ask, well, why am I doing it this way? Why can't I just add 365 times three? Well, what happens is because of that leap year, you might not get the exact same date. If I want to say three years, from this date, and I wanted to say 7 1 2018, and I don't want it to account for a leap year and say maybe 6 30 2018, then I need to do it this way. If I just do 365 plus a date, so I'm going to take this date plus 365 times 3, notice how it says 6 30. So that 365 day calculation doesn't take into account the leap year. And I want this to say the value 7-1. I want it to be the exact same month and day parameter as this date. So that's why we're doing it this way. 
The second way I can add three years to a date is again using the edate function. Select my start date, and now notice again the second parameter is months. And you might say, well, I'm trying to do three years to a date, not months. Well, we know there's 12 months in every single year. That does not change. So if I want to take three years to a date, I can add the number of months in three years, which is 12 times 3. And that'll give me the same value, July 1st, 2018. The next calculation we're going to do is the number of weeks between two dates. The number of weeks, we know there's seven days in a week. That does not change. Every week has seven days. So I can perform just a simple difference between two dates and divide by seven. Make sure you do order of operations, so I'm going to include a parenthesis. I'm going to take this date minus this date. And real quick, just to show you, that's the number of days, 125. And now if I want the number of weeks, I'm just going to divide by 7. And I get 17.9 weeks. Of course, if you want number of full weeks, you can always use the round down function. And round down this 17.9, so it says 17. And that'll show you the number of full weeks uh, between these two dates. The next two calculations we're going to do is the number of complete months and years between two dates, but this time we're going to use the date diff function. The date diff function is a hidden Excel function. Why is it hidden? Well, there's just no helper. Normally, when you start typing a date, you, or start typing any function, you get sort of this little helper menu to give you some recommendations. If I start typing date diff, you'll notice that nothing pops up. But if I keep typing, eventually it'll notice, oh yeah, you mean date, it, date diff, and it starts giving that little helper. Well, the date diff takes uh, three parameters. It takes a start date, which is your earlier date, an end date, which is your later date, and then what type of measurement do you want to include? You can choose months, you could choose years, and then you could choose this YM parameter, which we'll talk about in a second. So to do this formula, we said three parameters. So first start with my earlier dates, which is the 2001. Take my later dates. And then I'm going to add in either my M or my Y. So in this problem, I want the number of months. So to add my month parameter, include my, my quotation marks and type M for months and close out my function. And you'll notice that the, the date diff function gives me 16. Just quickly estimating, it looks pretty close to 16 months between these two dates. I can do the same function using years. And to do that, again, type date diff, no helper pops up. Remember, we start with the earlier function. Then click your later function. And this time, I'm going to choose the y uh, parameter, which is going to give me the number of years between two dates. And you'll notice it's 1. Now, you might say, well, the 16 months is a little more than a year. It doesn't give me a decimal. Exactly. It gives you the number of full months or full years between two dates. So this isn't going to give me a decimal representation of 1.3 1 or 1.25. It's going to give me the number of full years between these two dates. The last uh, parameter that you can choose, we said you could do months, you could do years. The last one is this parameter called YM. And the YM gives you the number of months after the number of complete years that have passed. So we said this is 16 months. So 16 months is one full year plus four additional full months, which is why this YM parameter gives me four. One full year has passed, and then it's got an additional four months added on to it. So that's what the YM parameter does. Okay, but in this case, we want years, so I'm going to change that back to Y. The last calculation we're going to do is calculating the fiscal year. So if your company is like most, a lot of times your fiscal year does not actually align with the calendar year. And especially if you're working in finance, you might want to add your total cost, your total revenue by fiscal year. And so if your fiscal year is offset by an X number of months, you're going to want to be able to take a date and calculate your company's fiscal year based on that date. So here's just an example of what we're going to use as our fiscal year. So January 19 is the fiscal year 2019. And starting in June of 2019, our fiscal year turns over to 2020. So in June, we're actually on the next, next fiscal year. So what I want to be able to do is if the month is six or later, I'm going to take the current year plus one. Because if it's June, July, August, whatever that year value is for that month year for that date value, I'm going to add one because it's now the next fiscal year. If the date is January to May, then I could just take the current year of the date. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to calculate fiscal year by 
I'm going to do an if statement. So if you have not done if statements before, tune into the uh, logical statements video on my YouTube channel. Um, but the if statement is relatively easy if you're just doing a basic uh, parameter uh, if statement. So it just takes a logical test. So I'm going to take a the month, because we said if it's greater than 6 or greater than or equal to 6, I'm going to add 1 to the year. So we know the month parameter gives me the month number. So if I take the month number of this, it's going to give me 7, because July is the 7th month of the year. So if the month is greater than or equal to 6, because if it's greater than June, then I want to take the year of this date plus 1. Otherwise, just give me the year of this date. Close your parentheses, and there you go, 2020. Because it's after June, I want the year plus 1. So let's go with this formula one last time. So if, now do my test. My test is if the month value is greater than or equal to 6 or greater than or equal to June, then give me the year parameter plus 1. So give me the current year plus 1. Otherwise, just give me the current year. And that gives me 2020. Thank you for tuning in to this video. If you like what you hear, please do subscribe and like my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.